Okay. So it's uh, quarter to two, uh, twelve. So I'm gonna start. But now, do you hear? Agree that we should probably do this lecture today. I mean, are you interested in systems approach and system thinking? Good, good. Because otherwise, without this explanation, I spent so many hours on this. Because otherwise, you you don't probably appreciate why we do system thinking and systems approach for entrepreneurship education. But but I think with you know as a side to this um, small le lecture element, um, the videos videos I think really help you to understand the approach and. If you have already uh, uh, look at the video, please take a look at it again after this um, lecture because it will mean probably a little bit different. You will understand better why I want you to know this. I don't want you to become, like I wrote on the email, I don't want you to all to become systems engineer. No, that's not my intention. But I want you to be able to think and sometimes behave like systems engineer, like super systems engineer who can work for NASA, right? The gently guy, yeah? Yes, so I want you to become like him. <laughs> no, so if you haven't take a look at the the strongly recommended video of NASA, please do so. You'll love him. I can guarantee you will love him. All right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? I, I, okay, I can show you. So it's a it's a video. I'm not gonna spend many hours on this, but. Um, it's a video that I sent you. You all got this, right? You all got the link to the videos, right? And um, so this is this guy. Okay. So it's not this guy. So he speaks for five minutes. So you think this is, oh my God, this is going to be super boring. You know, yes, this guy is, yes, very NASA headquarter type. He is a typical NASA headquarter. You know, we, yeah, we, we all love this guy, right? But not, not him that we want to see. So you need to skip for about five minutes to see our Mickey Mouse to show up, okay? Okay, I'm taking my first, make sure it's working. You can all hear me fine? All right, what are we going to do today? We're going to have fun, and we're going to learn something. We're going to share some points of view. You'll agree with them, disagree with them, whatever. I want you to at least think about them. Now, why am I here, and what am I going to do that's different than when I was up here in June of 2005? In June of 2005, I gave a talk on systems engineering, what attributes you had to have in order to be a good systems engineer. But that entire talk was aimed at how, okay? And it assumed that something was already defined to be engineered. Okay. Now there are two questions that come before that. If what you do is you back off far enough from all the things that we do, the flow of primary questions, if you allow me to invoke that, that sort of phrase, goes like this. Why, what, and then how? Okay. So what I'm gonna talk about is what is the system engineer's role when the dominant today, when the dominant questions are why and what? And because everybody likes lists from Letterman to Lee, okay, or however you want to do it, I'm going to eventually give you the top 10 attributes of a system engineer who plays in this why what field more than the how field. So that's what I want you to understand. You need to play in why and what field. Remember the the first day I showed you how, what, and you know, um, sorry, why and what and how, and you will be playing around with all these fields. Okay, you need to be comfortable talking about why. You need to be comfortable defining your what. You need to be comfortable discussing the how. And I want you to try to orchestrate all these discussions. So you need to act like him. Okay, so that's the intention. So this is the one of the videos that I sent you. So please take a look at him. And uh, yes, it's really fun. And it's, 
he talked about a little bit about engineering, but it's more of a general discussion that he does. And it's really easy to understand. He talks a lot and fast and funny. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. Yes. All right. So I hope now you understand why this is you know, relevant. And then we, we had a question from, I'm sorry. I'm Remy? OK. We had a question from Remy. Hey, Kane, I think this is not only important for entrepreneurs, for, but everybody. Yes, I agree to Remy. Yes, I do agree. If you want to become a logical person and relevant person in, in a company or, or any kind of group of organization, this is important. You have to think, you have to think like this. Not only entrepreneurs, but if you are strong entrepreneurship in your in, in you, then you do this. You will become a successful one. So, all right. So you you probably can answer all the quizzes I have from now on. Which one is the system? What's that? All of them? Okay. Let's ask. Who thinks this is a system? Raise your hand. I want to see your hand. Right. Yes, you're correct. If you don't think this is a system, you should wear glasses. <laughs> okay. Who thinks this is a system? Yes, we just said this is a system. It, 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 it consists of parts and it, it, it serves as a whole, right? What about this? Who can describe this as a system? Describe. Want to try? Ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there are the different parts that, that where you your hand comes in and where there the you pick up food. Yes. Or the other way to put it is you have two woods, right? Two woods. That's an element that interact with your context, which external system, which is your hand, and serves as a food picking up functionality. So that's how we call this a system. Huh? Okay, good. So, definition of a system. Let's, I have not clarified our definition, but I am almost, almost um, following this, um, this system definition. An interacting combination of elements to accomplish a defined objective. These include hardware, software, firmware, people, information, technique, uh, facilities, services, and other support elements. So this is actually from Inkose Systems Engineering Handbook. I'm just giving you these references if, because if you're really interested in this, I want you to take a look. This is the um, International Systems Engineering Council um, Systems Engineering Handbook. You can, I think you can buy this, buy this off from American Amazon. If you go to Amazon.com and then you can buy this, um, $130 if you buy them. But if you're paying for this book, this highly encourages you become a member of Inkozi personal. Um, then you can download it for free. And becoming an Inkozi member is about like hundred dollars, I guess. Then you get the book for free. So book is hundred thirty dollars. To become a member of Inkozi, hundred dollars. You do the math, all right? So, <laughs> right. And so this is the the almost the definition that I, we're following. But sometimes, sometimes this doesn't apply. Accomplish a defined objective. Sometimes you know your system may not have defined objective, like solar system. Does solar system have defined objective? You ask, you're asking wrong guy probably. You need to ask somebody up up there, right? <laughs> if if there is somebody up there, you, he or she may know this. But so like a natural system or a solar system may not have a defined objective, but it still does exist as a combination of, of interacting elements. True. So we are following this and. Another definition from ANSI is American National Standard Institute, and an aggregation of end product and enabling product to achieve given purpose. So I will explain. Um, these are three basic things for systems approach. Okay, all system consists of end product and enabling product. So all system consists of these two products. Okay. I will explain why, why and how. All system has subsystem. Okay, so it's a whole and a part discussion, and all system has its life cycle. All right, no matter what system we're talking about. So these are three again really important 
things that I want you to remember. So in addition to all the discussion we had earlier, all in addition to this, this is the characteristics of system, any system, regardless of domain. Systems engineering, system science, no matter business, space system, um, community, organization, any system can, be, can have this characteristic, starting from the um, end product and enabling product. So all system consists of end product and enabling product. This looks scary, but just think simple. So this is your system, right? System of interest as a whole. Then you, your whole always have an end product. Of course, that's what you want, right? Let's call this um, this uh, end product. You want this at the end. So this is your system. So I can call this end product. However, to able to get this, to realize this, I have many Enabling product. これ日本語は補助的成果物。補助的成果物。で、so end product is what you get, and this is what's helping to realize. Okay, and according to NSI EIA 632, this is um, this is mainly for Yoko 先生 What is it mainly used in? In the what field? In in general, is it? I, basically, engineering. Yes. Okay, engineering. Okay, it's more generic um, standard in in United basically in the United States. But they say enabling product can be MISI um, div division into these. Um, oh, actually, seven things. So again, seven. So development product, production products. Test product, deployment product, training product, support product, and disposal product. So these, this is just a definition. I don't want you to memorize all this, but you, I want you to know there is a end product and an enabling product to your system. So what, what, what do you mean is that, let's take an example. So what if your, let's see, who has a food on the table? Anybody? Snack? Food? Okay, let's take this oolong cha. Okay, oolong cha. So, you appreciated oolong cha so much that it's all left, just small portions left, right? You appreciated the oolong cha. So, let's call our oolong cha is our system. Okay, this is now my system of interest. All right, my oolong cha, the the tea, the liquid. It, it is the liquid. It's appreciated by. She ate it by your ryo, right? Yeah, ryo. Okay, this is my system. And it is it consists of end product and then enabling product. Okay, I'm trying to explain the definition. So end product is a tea, right? The liquid itself. But I can say the container, container, the bottle, bottle is a part of enabling product, right? If I define my liquid, <coughs> yeah, so my liquid as a system, then my bottle is an enabling product. If I take, if I see my in the bottle as a system, then it's different, right? It's, yeah, system of interest is different. My system of interest is a liquid inside. Now it's a liquid inside. I can say that, that that's enabling product. That's, that's making my end product available or realized. So that this is how it's defined. It depends on what you're looking at, okay? This may be a um, good example or maybe not for some of you, but for example, I develop satellites, right? Do you know satellites on the Earth? I develop satellites, and satellite needs to go up in space. How? Do you know how? Who takes satellite up in space? Superman? No. It's a rocket. It's a rocket that takes satellite into the space. So satellite is my system, and it's my end product 
and my rocket is uh, deployment product. It's just helping me to get there, right? My satellite system is uh, is in full service when it's in orbit, right? When it's in orbit, kido kido ni ita toki ni sai dai kachi o hakki shite ru wake de, sore ga watashi no system. で衛星そのものはエンドプロダクトなんだけどでもそこの最終的なシステムとしてちゃんと機能するためにはディプロイメントプロダクトとしてロケットがないとそこには行けないわけですなので私のエンドプロダクトはサテライトで私のディプロイメントプロダクトはロケットと OK? So that's the case If I work for Mitsubishi Heavy Industry like someone does in, like in this room then your project is rocket Right? Your project is to launch a rocket. And they don't care about that. Well, they do, but they don't care about the satellite. But their mission is to provide the um, transportation to the orbit. So their end product is a rocket, and then the, the satellite is, I don't know, maybe support product? Or maybe, yeah, somewhere around there, maybe. Okay? So it's vice versa. It's different. Because why that happens? Your system of interest is different. Hmm. Understood? So this happens a lot. This happens a lot, and it gives you a good idea what you're talking about and what you're not talking about. So you need to you need to understand this. Second thing you need to know is that all system has subsystem. Yeah. You want to make sure, or I mean, you want to make it clear. To communicate with others, you must need to clarify this. But it's not, I'm saying, you can, you do not have to follow exact definition, but you have to be thinking. From different people, your final product may not look like an end product. For some people, if you are looking, if you are manufacturing the bottle, then your bottle is an end product, but your customer, your The terminal customer or your re real user of the tea does not think your end product as an end product. The ah, so maybe it will be. Mm, you can say, well, from this definition, this is more of a for more for a satellite or car or something like this. For maybe you you can say it's a support product. If if um, you know when it's on the on the market it's trying to when it's on when this bottle is used it's supporting its use mm -hmm. so you can say maybe it's a support product and uh everything uh categorized into the eight this boxes no i don't think so mm -hmm. but because it's this is just a definition right so this is like a trying to get it messy but Almost everything can divide it into end product and the enabling product. That's mm -hmm. I think that's safely okay. considered. Yes. So sometimes I, you will you only use two boxes mm -hmm. uh, when you want to categorize the Ulon. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. Uh, I see. Yes. I see. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Kai. I'd like to ask the definition. Yeah. Uh, the, the could you going back to the uh, other one? Yes. So uh, I'm wondering whether Dev for example, development product is also recognized as a system, and then like mm. it, it also have the end product or other. Ah. Like so now, what if this is your system of interest? That's yeah. what you're asking. Yes, that happens. Ah, okay. That happens. If you are developing a satellite and you are uh, in charge of a development product that to realize the satellite, that if you're a project manager for that, then yes. You are in charge of that system, but system. it's in it, yes, it's all relative. It's all relative. But if you're talking to me as a satellite manager, you cannot call your system a system because I'll be what? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to understand who she or he or she is talking. What she or she is talking about and where you are. Okay. Yeah. So again, whole and apart. You're always in this paradigm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Satoshi, you had a question? Yeah. Um, uh, which is more important, uh, end product or enabling product? Um, I'd like to hear your opinion. Ah, both is important. <laughs> Otherwise, you will get never get system. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, which is more essential or? Both are. Okay. Because, like, like, like we said, so what, what if you don't have a bottle for your tea? What if you don't have a tea for your tea bottle? It doesn't make a system, right? I mean, so it depends. It, it, it both are required to realize the system. Yeah? Both are required. Mm. Okay? It's a conceptual, so you don't have to get it right now, but you will probably understand as we move along. Okay? And another thing that we want to make it clear is all system has subsystems. Okay? So system, like um, just um, Yasu asked us, end product and enabling product. And then your end product can break it up into subsystems. For example, oh, I let erase my solar system. But if my solar system is a system, an end product, I don't know what the enabling products are, but yes, um, end product. Then my sun, my earth, my Jupiter is my subsystem, OK? And you may want to call like sub subsystem, sub 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 system, but no. According to definition, there is always a two layers, okay? So if you want to go deeper, you start calling this your system of interest, and you break it down to subsystem. So you don't call, in a by definition, you don't call system, subsystem, and sub subsystem, and sub subsystem. It's always system and subsystem rela relationship all over again. Again, recursive, saikiteki, okay? Whole and a part, whole and a part all over again. So I think you already know that philosophy, so this is not a surprising, but it's de actually defined internationally that y this is how you understand system, okay? Good, and one another thing that's really important, all system has its life cycle. So life cycle is, is like, it's like uh, think about your life, okay? You as a system, human, when your life cycle start? Born, yes. December 3rd, that's the date my second child will be born, probably. Yes. He's a boy, and we're waiting for him. It's a few more days, so. And I'm not at home teaching this, so yes. You assume what's going to happen later on, but <laughs> right. So if I get the call, I need to go. So yeah, good luck with everything else, <laughs> right? So right. So. Yes, human starts when, it, when it's born. When, when is the end of your life cycle? When you die, right? So that's a life cycle. Exactly the same with your system, okay? Exactly the same with your system. So there is a beginning for the solar system. I don't know when, who knows when, and there is the end to the solar system. I don't know when, and who don't, no one knows when, but there is an end. So when you think about the life cycle, Every system has life cycle. Every system has life cycle. And this is the, um, the ISO definition, International Standard Organization definition of a life cycle, system life cycle. This is more of an engineering system, engineered system, like cars or satellite or things like this. So think about it. When, okay, let's say this is a satellite development team. We start, you know, it's, it's no joke because you have Yoki Sensei and me and we have Hun. We can do satellites, yeah? And so we're at the concept stage. We, are, we start thinking about our satellite. That's where our satellite born, okay? We start thinking. It's born, it's not born yet, but it's born inside our brain. So that's the beginning, okay? And, and it, it, it moves along. So development stage, we start developing, okay? After we design, concept design, we start developing and then after development, we start producing, right? We produce. And then we utilize, meaning satellite launched, and then it's up in space and it's working. And sometimes it needs a support, right? Sometimes you need to stop the service and then maybe check up and do maintenance a little bit. And then after a while, it retires. You know, we need to bring it down. Well, sometimes we do and sometimes we don't, but we need to discard. Right? We need to throw it away. So that's the end. That's the end. So every system has life cycle. Even business. For example, like startup. If you are starting up a business, you're here. Right? You're planning. You're preparing. And then you can say, 
you're in the development, you're like um, buying stuff, right? Like you're, you're trying to buy stuff or uh, maybe you're trying to ask people to join. And then um, product, well maybe we can skip the product. This is just a general reference, so you may some system may not follow this. So you need to you need to be thinking what stage you are in, where are you, what your system will be at, right? So and then when your business is running, it's a running stage or operation stage, and at some point, your business go retirement, right? Or there are several ways to exit your uh, exit from your business. What? IPO, like you know, it's called exit, right? IPO is that you you sh uh, you go public, right? You go public, you you get you become um kabushiki gaisha, right? So that's the IPO, or you sell it out, right? You you go you go talk to Sonsang, and Sonsang will buy your company, and you you call it done. Okay, you get fifty million dollars and happy to do next thing. So this is the end of your business. So that's how we think of our system. Every system has life cycle. It's different. One to one to one, different. It's very different. Okay, but you have to be thinking where are where is my system is at now, and we call it stages and phases. So these three concept is very important when we think about system. So I'm gonna just review. All system consists of end product and enabling product. Well, I hope you agree on this. And all system has systems. I'm sorry. All system has subsystems, and it's recursive. It's cyclic again. All system has its life cycle. So every time you are thinking about something, you have to think about this. Okay. So like I said, everything is system. Everything is system. So no matter what you're thinking about, you will you can think like this. Hmm. What what is my end product? What is my enabling product? Hmm. I should take care, take a good care of enabling product too, because if you focus too much, like Satoshi asked, if you ask, uh, uh, put too much focus on end product and forget about your enabling product, what happens? Satoshi, what do you think? Yes, yes, you will probably not realize your system, right? Because think about the satellite. If you think about the satellite and you don't think about the rocket, what happens? Your satellite will sit on your yard forever. That's not happy. That's not happy, right? So no matter what you're thinking, you want to think both. And all system has subsystem. This is a good practice to keep it simple. Two layer, system and subsystem. And all system has its life cycle. You need to understand what happens at where, okay? And why the there one thing one I want to add that why do you think ha why do you need to think about your system going through this life cycle? So if you are making a car, okay, making a car. If you are designing, if you're a designer, okay, designing for a car, you will probably design. Imagine your car going through the woods in a in a winding in a very fast speed. Right, so it looks cool. So it w you will probably draw your car so it looks really cool that when it's running really fast. However, however, your car has to be sent to the dealership at some point. Do you understand? So your car is not always running like that, but sometimes it's on the cargo or it's it's on the umpansha, right? It's on the umpansha and being sent to the dealership. And if that looks super ugly. If that looks super ugly, if your car doesn't fit to the cargo, like you know the carrier um, thing, then you need to, you know, provide a special kind of um, trailer. Then that's dumb, right? So you want to think about not only the utilization stage, but many other stages of your system so that it works okay. Yeah, if you think about the highlighted stage only, then you're gonna miss out the very important things. Yeah, do you understand? Do you understand? So sometimes you will see a product that is so hard to change battery. Do you have a product like that? Do you have a product that is so difficult to change battery? No? あれは、そう使ってる時のことはあんま考えてないから、ネジ40個外すとか。
めんどくさいわけですよ無理自分ではできないねって話になるわけですなのですごい使われてる時だけじゃないことも考えてなきゃいけないねってのがこのライフサイクルを考えましょうってののポイントです例えばビジネスだったら一番うまくいってる時のことを考えてたら何が起きます多分一番最初のスタートが切れませんよねもちろんもちろん切れないし準備する段階の何かこう手落ちが出てしまうかもしれないなのでできるだけ自分の対象の一生を最初に考えておきましょうというのがこのライフサイクルを考えましょういやいやいやこれで全然難しいです So you want to be thinking about your target or your system of interest throughout the life cycle not only the utilization stage or highlight okay So he or she was born as a baby and then die as a grandma or a grandpa. So you cannot just look at her in her 20s. Maybe I should bring that back. Yes. So, but, <laughs> yes. So, something like this. All right? Yes, go ahead. Okay. So, is the uh, uh, system, is the system hmm. uh, di dynamically changed? Uh, do, uh, depending on the life stage? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. So, so how? Yeah. Right. So, concept stage and deve development stage and production stage and utilization and support stage, your system may look very different. Uh, and I want to ask you uh, yes. uh, yeah, the end product and enabling product mm. will be changed depending on the life cycle. Uh, well, enabling, well, end product is usually um, imagined here, right? Mm -hmm. And everything else falls into the um, enabling product. So as you can see, concept and development, production, support, and retirement, you can see, see development, production, deployment, mm -hmm. disposal is a retirement. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a, it's almost uh, synchronized with the uh, uh, phases. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then in the end product, of course, it comes to the reality when it's utilized. Yeah. So once we uh, decide mm. the end product and enabling product, mm. uh, the we uh, don't have to change them uh, during the life cycle. I mean. Well, uh, right, mm -hmm. but may you may not know every end of enabling product before mm -hmm. you actually build them. You yes. start building, you will find out mm -hmm. many enabling product to come out. Mm -hmm. Yes? So this is just conceptual. Sometimes you know it beforehand. Sometimes you know as, as, uh, uh, as you move along. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I see. So we have to maintenance the Exactly. Diagram, exactly. So iterative. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not you define it first and then it will be like that forever. You have to check and you know change if you need so that's um iterate iteration is required yes thank you for pointing that out Taka. Oh. i guess I, I also have a question about life cycle definition yes. um in case of like uh, web application mm. or services yes um there's no final version we, we don't know how when ah. the final version comes yes. out right so it's uh kind of like a development stage the production stage and like the stage called power in like in parallel or so in, a, in a circle mill maybe. Uh, ah, yeah. yes. So mm. um, this kind of like life cycle definition or mm. like flow could yeah. be like, is it it's like uh, when uh, only one framework? Or no, you could no. Okay. This is just a reference model. Okay. So this is not true for every system. Like for example, um, like uh, like yeah, web web case. It's 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 you know updated so often, right? And uh, what about country? Country will probably never have retirements. Well, some country do, but Hopefully, Japan does not have a retirement stage. We're kind of in, 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 you know, in the early stage of retirement stage, maybe. But you know, we hope not. So it depends. It depends on what we're talking about. Yes. So, so this is just a reference model. Reference model. OK? So this is important uh, and, um, as a side to what we discussed earlier in the morning and to understand, to approach things as a system. Thank you. 
before we get into break, I just want to introduce what we're going to do today. So this is what we're doing today. A lot. Okay? A lot. See, Taka is laughing because he's an SDM person, and he knows what it, this looks like. And who you know what this looks like? It means a lot, right? <laughs> yes, they're laughing. All right, good. So we're going to cover four things. Value graph, causal loop diagram, customer value chain analysis, functional and physical architecture. Okay? But it, lo it sounds scary, but no. According to what we learned in the morning, it's simple. Okay, value graph, this is what we're doing. Purpose and alternative, well, whoops, alternative idea viewpoint. That's the viewpoint we're standing, and our parts are higher purposes and alternative ideas. You will see that whole and then the parts, okay? And then we, we're standing on a, this viewpoint. Causal loop diagram, we're gonna stand on the cold cause and effect viewpoint, okay? And then we're gonna see parts as causes and effects, okay? And customer value chain analysis, we will be standing on a value chain viewpoint, value chain viewpoint, and then our parts will be stakeholders and their values. Okay, simple. And function and physical architecture, we're gonna talk about, we will be standing on function and physical viewpoints, and we're gonna talk about functions and physical structures. So, according to what we learned, what we're doing today is multiple viewpoints and recognizing different elements and their relationship, and drawing a lot of diagrams. Comfortable? Yeah? So, yes, you, you will be doing a lot of systems approach, but they're pretty useful. So, yes. So this is why I spent so, many, so much time trying to communicate you why we approach system, because this way you can understand what we're doing. Otherwise, you will be just learning tools, right? That's not the essential. I want you to understand why these tools exist. What are the essence of these tools? And in terms of systems approach, it's different viewpoints and recognizing different elements and its interrelationship and drawing different diagrams. Excited? Good. All right, let's take a break. Let's come back at um, 12.20, 12.20 after lunch and we will, not 12.20, 120. <laughs> yes. 120 after lunch here and we're going to start our the our lecture on these materials. All right. I'll see you after lunch.